Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. Full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Batman. My favorite character. I love Batman. Hit him with the double weapon. All right, kids. Welcome back. He's not going to hear this. That's true. No matter. All right, kids. Welcome back to We Are the Night. <gasps> the. The. Wow. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, she on fire. Fire. It is. A little hot fire, Dad. That's right. And today we're going to be doing part two. Our two part Firefly series. Uh, this time from Detective Comics 714 and 715. The very sneaky guest star. <laughs> Put a little extra for a little. All right, and we'll talk some new books, but there weren't a lot of bad. There weren't a lot of bad books this week. It's because everybody's uh, spending their money at Comic Con. Why? Everybody's spending their money at Comic Con. Duh. Hopefully, yeah. All right, so Doubt it. just trying to be nice. I mean, do they still do the same attendance? I mean, no. COVID really killed everything. A lot of the smaller cons have taken it upon, kind of taken the torch and run with it. Well, yeah, because I'm and sure. Like I a said lo- before, you know, D3, that's where they announced all the, everybody has just has their own con now, which is stupid. I hate it. I'm not paying a million tickets for something, so I'll just sit home and I'll just let people leak it to me. I don't give a fuck. Good, Grandma. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, especially, you know, people just want to, you know, see the comic side of things again i think comic con's gone to you know movies tv yeah, comic con no, there's no artist out there's like a very small art artist alley and all that stuff now it's just very you know i was over it in 2018 i'm pretty sure so <laughs> i can only imagine what it is now all right now the prices the crowds i'm like i if for me i'd be like i just want to talk comics <laughs> yeah if you have to like you like like I, I just I hate getting on a plane. Mm-hmm. It's still a thing, and it's always gonna be a thing. And you got bubonic plague, dengue fever, you got all this other crap. Con, con crud. Exactly. Which more than likely probably is COVID at this point. Pro, pro, well, yeah, it's mutated. Yeah. Caring, caring for, <laughs> touching another human being that's not myself. Exactly, I pass. But on a happier note, we've got a Chuck Dixon book, so that'll make oh one yes, one person we know happy and one person furious. Ah. Nobody tell Justin. <laughs> oh my God, Noel Tate was on fire last. Well, he can we pop in real quick because there's one episode we were talking about. Oh, you can see Baroness's thong in one of the comics, and that now every week, every month, Noel's like any thong, any thong. I'm like, oh, holy crap, Noel. That so. but that whale tail scares me. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I was like, you know, I know like the thong, right? Uh, Booty looks good all the time. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So yes, t- uh, two issues: Detective Seven Fourteen and Seven Fifteen. Detective Comics Seven Fourteen from October nineteen ninety seven. A world for burning. I think that's There's a, little... a pill for that. Oh! <laughs> oh my. Writer, of course, yes. Signal Doom mascot Chuck Dixon. Penciler Graham Nolan. Uh, inker Eduardo Barato. Uh, colorist. The usual suspects. Yes. Colorist Gloria Vasquez and Android Images. Letterer John Costanza. Costanza. <laughs> Can't stand you. Can't stand you. Editors Scott Peterson and Darren Vincenzo. Oh yeah, did you see uh, 
starting in the fall. They're like mixing up uh, all the books are getting new creative teams. Detective uh, Tom Taylor is jumping from Nightwing to Detective. So good for him. Mm -hmm. Well, who's getting Nightwing? Um, oh yeah, me and Chris were talking about that. That is, hold on. Again, it always. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue too. Uh, but, 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 yeah, Titans and Nightwing are getting new teams here. Uh, oh, Dan Waters and uh, is writing, and Dexter Soy is doing art. Interesting, <coughs> interesting artistic choice, literally. Dan Waters, who did that recent uh, Azrael uh, miniseries. Yes, I am aware. That's I know. An interesting artistic choice. I know. Mm, then John Layman and Pete Woods on Titans. I'm sorry. Some I, fresh faces shaking some things up so they can cut pay ice and pay the. Oh my! Pay. Yeah. No tea, no shade. That's just what I see. If I see something, I say something. And then we're getting thick, thick absolute Batman. Donkey, donkey. Not even thick. It's donkey. Oh my! All right. Firefly watches Batman and Robin burn, but then Lynn's dream is interrupted by the sound of a knocking door. <laughs> Same blood at this point, especially that Batman and Robin book. It's like, just be a goddamn father, Bruce. <laughs> He's watching Batman burn, and there's a knock at the door, so he had to zip his pants up. <laughs> Ray? Oh! Be for Ray. Oh, my. Rumpy Pumpy. Well, he loves to play, you know, with his hands. One on deck, camera. two deck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like he's skiing if he's doing two decks. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, the hard master. All right. Uh, the person knocking is the landlord who wants Linz to shut up. <laughs> We're all the landlord. All right. Garfield Linz had nowhere to hide except a hotel, a hotel for criminals. John Wick, is that you? As the landlord would take any criminal in as long as they pay the rent. Cue the guy from from uh, the Spider Man movies. Rent, rent. <laughs> Elsewhere in Gotham City, Montoya and Bullock arrest a man for drunk driving, and a federal warrant appears in their database. They deliver Confirm the man. Confirmed Gotham is not in Florida. Confirmed Gotham is not in Florida. <laughs> they deliver the man whose name is Wiley Dalbert. To a couple of FBI agents. As the feds take the man into their car, a flash of light blinds all of them, and when the light fades, Delbert is gone. Boy, Garfield and Delbert, and what the hell are we reading, bro? This is like some shit out of the 40s. I know. I was going to say Alien Abduction, the X Files was still on the air. Mm hmm. The bad seasons. Oh my. I said what I said. Fight, my... fight me, X File nerds. I dare you. Oh my. I dare you. I don't even think Motor and Scully were actually even on the X Files in 97. That's <laughs> At true. At least one of them was missing, I'm pretty sure. At least one, maybe both. Yes. Fight me, nerd. All right, down, honey, you badger. Down. All right. Uh, all right, all right. Don't, but... don't talk X Files. It's still a tender spot. <laughs> all right. No X Files kids, no Snickers, no nothing. All right. Uh, oh, maybe Kelly Kelly Thompson can redeem the Snickers thing. Uh, well, oh. Watch them put half page ads on that fucker. <laughs> I'll definitely lose it. Nah, I think they've learned their lesson there. What are you kidding? Did no they one's learned their lesson. No, they didn't learn, but no one's advertising in comics except the, the comics themselves. So I don't think you have to worry about them. Later, Batman and Robin go to the scene to discover what happened in the case. Meanwhile, Delbert enters the Hotel for Criminals looking for a room. Delbert gives the landlord a sheaf of dollars, and he is allowed to stay. The landlord goes up again to throw out Garfield Lins and make plays for the new tenant. Delbert notices Lins' pyro pyromaniac tendencies and decides to pay the landlord another sum so he could leave his own room and stay elsewhere for a couple nights. Delbert offers Linz to work together as partners. Meanwhile, Batman oh, and Robin... can't be partners? 
Oh, are you saying Delbert's going to get burned? Burn. Real bad. Real bad. <laughs> Here's some ointment, kid, because you just got burned. Uh, some aloe, something, some silver. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin discover Delbert's identity, but the information isn't enough to learn why he is wanted by the FBI, and much less how he disappeared from four highly trained officers and Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bullock. Uh, Montoya and Bullock search the city for Delbert, and they are told by some witnesses that Delbert was seen at a different place the time he disappeared. Bullock gets mad, thinking that the people weren't being serious and decides to let Montoya handle the questioning. Bullock goes to a parking lot to smoke when an officer from the Denver Police Department named John Jones mm. calls him. Mm. 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 Officer, Archie I say... Archie Manhunter is so unserious. Like, just so unserious. He's a fault. He's a <laughs> oh, my... Detective, I call him more of a manhunter. <laughs> not not those kind of manhunters, but yes. <laughs> no, not the little hellfire variety for the Justin variety. No. Not the Wally's parent variety either. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh Jones is looking for Delbert as well and asks Bullock a few questions. When Montoya reaches Bullock, Jones had left without Bullock noticing. Hmm. Shortly oh. after, <laughs> hmm. boy, a lot of people in Gotham do that. Hmm. Shortly after, I mean, it's Gotham. You got to. No, oh, yeah. Almost he has, as if he has access to teleporter technology like someone else in Gotham. <laughs> no, no, he just turned invisible. Shortly after, Delbert is at the Gotham Library searching for some books, and the librarian is curious about Delbert's old books request and appearance. Yeah, this is pre this is pre uh, nine eleven because they check all your library shit now. They would have caught him for sure back then if that's yeah. the case. Sad but true, kids. Sad but yes. true. But, his but still support your local libraries. Yes, please. <laughs> Where, else? Where else can you go and read books for free? Your friends ain't letting you do it. Hell, your dumbass friends probably don't even have books. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, his appearance reminds her of a man she knew many years ago, uh, many years before. Meanwhile, the landlord tries to make a reservation at the Ritz Marlton Hotel when he is taken by the security <laughs> guards. <laughs> after, after paying. The Magia is going on, bro. After paying his reservation with Delbert's money. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think the reservation was fine, but then when he ordered one of those hookers, I don't know. Uh, later, Delbert and Lynn's plan to strike on a jewelry, uh, on a jewelry, uh, on a vault and steal the gems. Delbert tells Lynn's that he would meet him at a certain point in time in the future. <laughs> Remember that, kids. Sorry. The future. Uh, <laughs> Alfred and, oh God, product of its time. Alfred and Robin are discussing some possible theories of how Delbert managed to escape when Batman interrupts their discussion as there is a new lead on the case. Commissioner Gordon calls Batman to tell him that the police apprehended a man at the Ritz Marlton for paying with cash that is dated two years from the present. <laughs> Not even counterfeit. It's stuff the uh, Treasury is planning to introduce. That's like mm -hmm. that one show that it's always the money with the time travelers. It's always the money. Got to be like Doc Brown and carry a, a suitcase full of like cash from different eras. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Gordon also tells Batman that the police are on their way to apprehend the source of the cash, Wiley Dalbert. Uh, Wiley Dalbert. Uh, Journey man mm. ahead of his time. The GC <laughs> the GCPD and John Jones arrive at the hotel in order to take Delbert into police custody. At the sight of the police, Linz and Delbert start to argue. Jones and Bullock are about to catch them when Jones feels a change in the barometric pressure, and again the blinding light stuns them, allowing Delbert to escape. 
a few seconds later, a fiery explosion consumes half the building in fire. Bullock, Montoya, and the GCPD are safe, but Jones receives the impact of the explosion directly. He is burning and his clothes are completely destroyed. At that moment, Batman and Robin decide to act, but as soon as they enter the building, the floor beneath them collapses and they find themselves at the mercy of the Firefly and his flamethrower. About damn time. Exactly. And again, it's like, I like, well, I like the first issue. It's like, you have no idea. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. That's Martian Manhunter, but if you do know, you know. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you're an arsonist um, and you're a Martian that's afraid of fire. What, mm. what are we doing here, bud? And yes, the FBI agents that did come to pick him up did kind of look like Mulder and Scully. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. <laughs> uh... They wouldn't be bothered with that, though. They'd be chasing Martian Manhunter, let's be real. Uh, that's true. That's true. They think he's behind it or something. Why did your ship take him? <laughs> Oh, God, and the Delbert was singing the song. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. Yikes. Yeah. He really likes that tapioca pudding laced with Xanax at Arkham, doesn't he? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bubble, bubble, bubble. That's right. Uh, all right. So, any other thoughts on this one, love? No, let's just begin at the next issue in the most ridiculous Batman and Robin at the mercy of Firefly. Okay, okay, Chuck Dixon. We know you were out hanging out with freaking Grant doing some anawaska at this point. Where's my Batman 66? <laughs> exactly. The most burningest is yet to come. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yeah, Detective Comics 715, November 1997, Days of Fire. Uh, by, the, by the same team. Yes, Batman and Robin are at the mercy of Firefly. The pyromaniac was telling Batman how he would burn them, and Batman distracts Lynn's enough to throw a batarang at him. That gave Batman the edge he needed as, as he took an unconscious Robin and escaped from the burning building. The GCPD was still inside the building, but none of them were harmed. Detective John Jones was the most affected because of the explosion and the burning fire surrounding them. Almost as if he's a little shit. That sucks. <laughs> he's a, at this point, he's like a 14-year-old kid. Leave him alone. Get it together, Timothy. Come on. They got, they got, how, do you, how else do you prop up Bat God? Come on. Everyone true, else is passing true. out, but Bat God. Uh, no, 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 yeah. John Jones, he lives effective. for days like this, <laughs> literally. Exactly. The fire department arrived to control the fire, and Detective Bullock took, took Jones to the hospital. Batman gave Robin some oxygen to make him wake up. Later, the duo decide to head back to the back cave. Oh, like a go. backhand. <laughs> oh, my oh, boy, wake a up. Backhand, should I say? <laughs> oh, wake up, boy. Uh, oh, I love this scene. Alfred provides his medical knowledge to heal both of them, and while doing so, he sedates Bruce so he can rest for that night at least. <laughs> it's like giving your kid Robitussin. and there you go. I know, I know, I know. I love that scene. He's Have just some like, NyQuil chicken. There you go. I love how he's like, oh yeah, he gives him the shot, and Bruce like, what is this? Like antibiotics, you know, just so the the uh, burns don't get infected, and that Bruce just passes out. He's like, maybe a sedative. <laughs> Tim's like, oh, he's going to be so bad. And Alfred's like, oh, I'm trembling. <laughs> he's like, yeah, let's see him watch. Bruce is not above a spanking from Alfred, so, you know. Oh, my. <laughs> Alfred's like, what's he going to do? Wash his own wash his own underwear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's he going to do? Fire me? He's like, well, he has fired you a couple of times. It just hasn't stuck, to be fair. I think Alfred's quit more and he's been You've fired. quit a few times. What, what's the worst going to happen? He's going to wash his own clothes and make his food, his own food. Oh God! Oh dear heavens! <laughs> Deary me! I think Ray, I think Ray's getting excited now. I think Ray's <laughs> playing with the deck right now. Uh, the next day, that's D E C K. YouTube. That's, that's kids. Ray plays games. Oh, and thank you, everyone. Uh, 
was it as of yesterday? I think we are at 500 YouTube subscribers. So thank you. And why aren't we live streaming to the app yet? <laughs> I got to figure it out. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, get yourself a handy dandy uh, iPad, I guess. I don't know. That's a that. <laughs> well, kids, that's that's little Hellfire's uh pep talk. Uh, I'm getting the bad. All right. Uh, the next day at the GCPD headquarters, Jones appeared looking for Bullock. The doctor said that he suffered some second degree burns, but Jones seems to be fine. He asked to see Commissioner Gordon, and he was told that. Gordon was busy with the police partner. Jones knew that Gordon was talking to Batman about the Delbert case, and he decided <laughs> to enter the commissioner's office. He Still proved invisible, bro. Eavesdrop. Well, I he's can't... got the best power set. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. oh, he like... doesn't use it, right? Well, he's Superman, but he can shape shift and he can go invisible. Yeah. Well, technically, Superman can kind of sort of shape shift slightly. Is that some silver age crap? <laughs> It, it it might even be golden age to be honest. <laughs> we know, we know. We had a giant ant head. We know. <laughs> God, no, no, we will not talk about that. You saved that for electric mullet, bud. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> That's before our time. Uh, and soon the return of Justin for our three part exile. Uh, yeah, so uh, check that out. Uh, I love it. It's like, oh, John, I've worked with him. <laughs> I know him. He provided Gordon with a profound more information about Wiley Dalbert. As soon as Gordon was distracted, both Jones and Batman had disappeared, leaving Gordon angry and alone. Uh, oh, so a little, little hellfire. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Batman knew the truth about Jones and his identity. Well, duh, jail lays out. Batman knew that Jones was in <laughs> fact Martian Manhunter. The pair went to the uh, the jewelry store that Delbert would strike at, and Linz was heading there too to make Delbert pay for betraying him. Delbert appeared inside the jewelry safe out of nowhere, but when Martian Manhunter was waiting for him inside it, <laughs> when Jones captured, you do, uh huh. When Jones captured Delbert, they went out of uh, the safe just to face Firefly in his flamethrower. Batman appeared with a fireproof fat suit and knocked Firefly down, but Delbert managed to escape again, disappearing from disappearing from fast sight. Batman asked Jones for an explanation, and the Martian told him that Delbert was a scientist that unveiled the secret of the neutrino, allowing him to travel backwards in time. So he knew everything that would happen because he lived the events in reverse order. Suck uh, it, Eobard. <laughs> and then at the Gotham Library, the librarian is shocked to see a picture of Delbert in an old book showing him as the founder of that same library. So the thief got away. <laughs> Mm. Oh, smoking that good stuff, bro. Oh yeah, and then uh, yes, there is a reference to an, some Al Pacino movie because of the release date of this issue. The movie could be The Devil's Advocate. That does seem like a movie Chuck Dixon would like. <laughs> well, one of the security guards said it sucks. So you I know, unless, you know, unless Chuck Dixon didn't like it, because one of the security guards said, "Yeah, that sucks." <laughs> Uh, all right. Thoughts? I don't know if the whole backwards thing works where it's like, oh, yeah, because they said he's from the future. I don't know how, like, pretty, I don't know how far in the future they didn't say, but I'm like, would that really have been written down in historical records where Firefly was hiding out and just the little details? Well, this is the thing, right? Like, with all the multiverses and omnipotent beings and things like that, maybe, like, it's the DC universe. You just don't know. Like, things that seem insignificant to us could be significant to the, the legionnaires, you know, for instance. Stuff that's, like that, so. that's true, yeah, yeah. And again, it's the, again, there's no one future, especially in comics. It's all possible futures. Yeah, I get it. Speaking of that, Nightwing made a weird nod to old continuity that I'm still confused about. 
<laughs> oh, how so? That we won sixteen. I was just like, okay, that was like three continuities ago. I think. What? Which thing are you talking about? Just all of it. Like it's just like I don't know. Tom Taylor loves it. Like I'm just like, bro. Can we just focus on the future? Like, what are we doing with Heartless? I don't care about all this, all this fan service crap. Just give what is going on. This is making well, Nightwing look bad. I know, but he only has two more issues. I know. Is he gonna resolve it? I feel like uh, I don't know if that could actually be resolved in two issues. Well, it's gonna have to, I think. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe you were talking about. Unless we get a. Oh yeah, go ahead. I thought you were gonna t- uh, say something. Are you talking about uh, reversing the theme and who puts on that Nightwing suit at the end? Yeah. <laughs> I said. Like, he's awful. Well, I told Chris that I said, is there going to be some scene at the in the last Tom Taylor's last issue where Dick's shaking hands with Nightwing, being like, oh, thanks for saving me for, uh, pr- thanks for clearing well, my name. Like, it doesn't work the other way around. Like, Bruce is out. Well, that's, a, well, that's what I said. Not a shame. That's what I said. If it was for real, people would, be sw- people would see him swinging around and be like, man, test that man. You can't I can't do like, one Dick Grayson kick, you know, flip nothing. Oh, you're, oh, you're calling him the, uh, uh calling him the Steven Seagal of the Bad Family. Ah. Oh. You just know the t- the the, kid, the Bad Kids are got a group chat. Look at his ass. He looks awful. He's not fooling nobody. I know. I know. If you really wanted to Jamie, go, go get your dad, bro. I know. If you really wanted to like do the look, I mean, Jason is right there. It, maybe, exactly. Maybe Tim, but Jason would physically fit, you know, fill the bill. No, I said all everyone at Bloodhaven was gonna be like, man, we better start testing Nightwing for uh, steroids, you know? Dude, looking swole. Steroids, human growth hormone. <laughs> I'm just the, waiting. All the PEPs. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> oh my lord! Okay, Ray's gonna attack, grab on that. Be like, yes, Batman's on roids. He has a tiny penis. Yes, yes. I mean, we all know that he was addicted to venom. It was just a really nice that package. Venom. A lot of <laughs> uh, steroids do not give you a nice package at all. I know, I know. Uh, well, I said, I hope we get like a funny like scene next to episode where, like, you know, Pete Bruce is doing something as Nightwing and Barbara's in his ear saying, Crack a joke, crack a joke. No, <laughs> yes, crack a joke. Damn it. <laughs> smile. That's what he does. Smile. <laughs> No, he should have put the disco costume on, bro. Oh, I know, but that not be calling too much attention because they could have been wearing that in a long time. I know. I just, just like that suit is not good for Bruce at all. But no, I didn't even say anything to Kristen, but I was like, I was starting to get some uh some uh bad uh, Bruce Tim vibes because his because Bruce is stripping on that uh rooftop and Barbara's standing there. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> No. Yeah, no. no. I don't think Tom Taylor would. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Especially since he's a little Bob. overly aware of what the fandom likes and dislikes. I feel like is and, his weakness, and like I yeah. feel like that influences him a lot. And again, Dick and Barbara are still together. I don't think that. I don't think Bruce Want is that small big. miracles. Bruce isn't that <laughs> big. Of a, I don't think Bruce is that big of a scumbag. Um, this Bruce is absolutely this guy knew he's Bruce. He's an asshole. I, I, yeah, m- most of the time. But Tom Taylor's really been writing like that father son relationship. So I don't think it's Bruce one-sided. in this would do that. Wow. <laughs> well, he, well, he is better than Batman. So exactly. Uh, but I guess he's gonna have to retract that since he's gonna he's he's jumping ship to the big book. <laughs> well, detective. The big book, exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, I thought I thought you'd like the uh the the Dick Grayson side of the story. He he leaves town with his dog and you know moves up into the mountains. <laughs> it's not gonna stick. So what do I care? Now, if what? we were actually gonna go and just run away with the dog forever, and he'd be somewhere else other than Bloodhaven. I think it's time for a venue change, personally, but. I mean, new team they might. Well, it, 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 you know, I actually kind of hated it. It gave me uh, uh, Oliver and Felicity riding away into the sunset. Like, I just didn't like it. What? <laughs> Him leaving town? Taking the dog and going into the mountain. Oh, I well. I don't like those. Well, he's on a quest to, you know, not be afraid of heights anymore. <laughs> Babes, that's, like, come on. You know what I mean. Come on. Uh-huh. 
it's it, it's time for it, he needs he needs a refresher. He needs. I feel like he's done everything he can do with this character. It's okay, babes. You can go. Come on, come on, Lil. I'm setting you up. What's the best man? A dead man. That's not true. Oh, Unless you're uh, in the will. Oh, oh, oh my. No, I mean, uh, oh, I'm sorry. What's the best man? An artificial man. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, Scream at. Steam powered. Uh, <laughs> powered. Oh my. Hydraulic grumpy pumpy, yeah. <laughs> grumpy pumpy. <laughs> Sex on the mind. Good, like, it, it's time for Tom Taylor to go. Well, he is, and two more, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's felt like he's been wrapping it up for like the last 16 issues, if I'm being honest with you. It's so, been, a, I mean, it, stop dragging your feet. It's been a few years, and again, I feel bad for all all these writers because, again, I mean, Tom Taylor's been there for a while. I mean, his his run's been interrupted by Fear State and Night Terrors. That's just part of the business now. I don't feel bad. For I know. Anymore. I know. It is what it is. You knew you you knew what you were getting into at that point. I mean, he's, I mean, he's fine. He's fine. You know, he he steered with it. He did. Yeah, I mean, it's just I feel like he feels. I it to me, it feels like he feels like. He's done all he can do. He's just been dragging his feet, just waiting on that next assignment. I'm just interested to see what he does next and what the next team's gonna do with Nightwing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, he got he got dropped. Like he when he took over Nightwing, it was it was in a good place. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't really have to do too much. In a a good place, uh, as in Rick Grayson was going. <laughs> exactly, small miracles. You know. Uh -huh. I, you know, honestly, I didn't mind it that much. Uh -uh. People over exaggerate that thing way too much. What? Rick Grayson? How dare you? We've had worse. Well, it was such a mess because it's like the the original writer who came on to do it left like pretty early on. And then they had like brought in, uh, I think they brought in Fabian for a few issues. And then eventually went to like Dan Jurgens and stuff who like basically had to like come up with an ending for that yeah which kind of, i mean kind of, I've, seen, I've seen worse fumbles in the nightwing runs i'm just yeah yeah but again it, i mean it was just like i said it was just set up to fail because again the guy who came up with the idea pretty much left after like the first issue or two yeah it happens sometimes you get too big for your britches and executives don't like that mm -hmm. so you know all right but you know what else was out this week we're getting closer. Catwoman 67 came out this week. I know. Two more I love months. love this cover. This cover is so good. Oh, my God. I'm trying. We're going to have a, a bunch of parties coming up. I the art looked like that on the inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. But, yeah, I mean, you like the purple suit being back? I like the purple suit on the cover. <laughs> wow! Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mind the purple suit. It makes her distinct to me, and also gives me Huntress vibes. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, that is one of her better suits. Again and again. No, not it's even not mouse ears, at least. Oh yeah, anything's better than mouse ears. So yeah, are we gonna have to have a good party, a sixty-nine party when <laughs> this hits sixty-nine? <laughs> Uh, what, what else are we reviewing with that one? Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what's out around that time, but I thought we were going to do a special episode on that. Yeah, we'll yeah, see what else. Yeah, we're doing a special episode, absolutely. But also, like, because Teeny's not writing that one, right? 68's her last one? Um, hold right? on, let me look, let me I, look I thought up. I felt like 69, she was not writing. Let me see, because, oh, she doesn't want to get along with the gag, uh. I think that's solicited now. Uh... <laughs> oh, everyone else gets it. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, looks like Catwoman 69 is going to be... Oh, God, how do you pronounce her name? Uh Tor Torin Gronbeck. Uh, the one who was writing Venom along with Al Ewing. You know, taking turns writing that Venom with Al Ewing. Yeah. She's writing it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, well, that our our party will be a farewell to Teeny and a welcome to the new writer. Uh -huh. And just all things Catwoman, modern Catwoman. It's been a pretty good run. It's been a solid run. 
Yeah. Especially oh, I don't. Bikini came on. I was just like, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm. I'm guessing. Yeah, they're going to be. The, again, it's the October. That's when all the shakeups are going on. So I think that's then they're going to be the new creative team. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's which for it, me, it's like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and I mean, they don't necessarily have to do it, but. I mean, it's nice once again. We're no, gonna I feel it. like they feel like they do because they they probably want to re, uh, renumber it. Pretty but I mean, it's just that, probably get it to seventy five renumber. Yeah, it. but it, but it is nice that we got another female writer. Yeah, which we've pretty much had since the beginning here. Oh my, they know what they're difference? they're know what they know what we're they know what they're doing. Uh, yeah, episode sixty nine, new suits, showing some cleavage. Yep. It's giving me Halle Berry, but it's okay. Big old whip is back. Yep. Giving Halle Berry. Ugh, don't say I that. I hope that's not indicative of anything. Well, and that movie turned 20 this year, by the way. We should probably watch it. Talk about it. Didn't we talk about that on Super Worship? We can watch, we can, well, that is on Patreon behind a paywall. What we can do is we can watch it with the sound off and just talk shit. Oh, okay. Okay. We can masterpiece three thousand that motherfucker. <laughs> so where are we gonna do that? Are we gonna do that here? Are we gonna do that on salty and petty? Where? We... I mean, wherever. I well, care. I was gonna say. I don't oh, think God. we have room over here. <laughs> Gotta make room. Mr. OCD calendar man, you 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 give calendar man shit, but you're calendar man. Hey 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 hey. Not only are we me, appreciate you, Phil. Not only is it just me and Justin, but also I heard I learned this week also, Mr. Tyler Patrick's already plant plotting Krypton report into at least 2025. So I don't want to hear it. Of course he is. <laughs> well, course well, yeah, he that, is. Well, well, yeah, because next year he's like that movie's coming out. <laughs> and podcast nerds. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Well, we're the really only nerds here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no. I was gonna say, should we do that for a big anniversary episode on Saudi and Petty? <laughs> no, no. I will not put anybody else but you through it. I'm sorry. Here's some kitty litter for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we'll do that somewhere. Oh man, we're dead. But wait, somebody rudely reminded me of that literally today, so I felt like I had to bother you and let you know that as well. Okay, we'll do it this year sometime. I promise. Oh, we we already did episode sixty nine. Uh. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, all right. So what else? Oh, uh, Batman. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest was out this week, also. Indeed, it was. Number 29. Oh, yeah. Did you see that announcement? Uh, Mark Wade's going to be doing a 12 issue Batman and Robin year one. Yeah, I saw that. About Bruce and Dick's early days. It's uh, starting to feel like we're reading between the pages, but you know, at least at least it's Mark Wade. <laughs> yeah, at least it's Mark Wade. Yeah, yeah. Which again, I mean, I can say it's like, oh, at least it's not somebody I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're learning there because I mean, all of a sudden it seems like they're handing a lot of stuff to Mark Wade. So, oh, did you see? I don't know if that's starting in October too. I think they're going once again. I mean, Will had a chill over this. Action Comics is going weekly again soon here. Warriors if, prepare your statements. But <laughs> I think action comics goes weekly. Nothing good can come of it. Nothing. No. But again, but I think but I think they said what is it? It's gonna be Mark Wade and uh, Mariko Tamaki. Yeah, so oh okay. Well so, still, I mean, the, I, I mean I there are good there, there are good something they, something is brewing in the background that's not good for Superman. When they start making them go weekly, they're about to overexpose the fuck out of Superman. Well, the last and time that they makes did, sense because you gotta think about it. The Superman movie's like literally right around the corner. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I'm sure it's probably for the movie because yeah, remember the last time action comics went weekly was for his fiftieth uh -huh. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I I mean I I at least appreciate that they're trying to like bring him back to you know Superman back to his prominence you know, yeah. and not just resting everything on Batman. If only we could only have two Bat books, you know that would be great. <laughs> Cause what the hell is Dark Knights of Steel all winter number one like? Isn't that also more Tom that, Taylor by the way? Isn't that more that medieval shit? 
It is, but it's a number one, and I was just I was looking at it in the comic book, and it's it's an elsewhere tip too. But I'm just like, that's mm. the other thing. Then we're pumping out like a bunch of Batman Elseworlds worlds and stuff. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, it's like, babes, read that room, read that room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, again, instead of 50 bad books, you know, well, again, uh, all those absolute books are coming out. Maybe pull back on some of the bad books or give some characters who haven't had a book in a recent years some book, you know, a new title. Hey, Aquaman, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, Red Hood. Hey, uh, Manhunter, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, we need a good John Jones book, yeah. Oh yeah, there's so many people. Yeah, honestly, I need a Bizarro book. I'm just gonna be so real with you. I need a Bizarro book. We need the Outlaws back. We need we need that we need that Dark Trinity and Red Hood and the Outlaws. We do, we really do, but they've forgotten all about that. That's well, that's as dead as Batman Incorporated, but sorry to be the one to tell you. Yeah, I know. At least <sighs> give us the Red Hood back with him and Roy. Jeez, something. Give me something. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else could get a book? Uh, hell, you have 20 flashes. And you could do another flash book. Like we were doing. Do a fa flash family anthology at this point. Because yeah. I feel like not... no one writer wants to like pick between all. Like, I feel like everybody wants to do something. Like they're always like trying to write in one of the other flash fam. Like low key on yeah. it, so I'm just like, yeah, just make a flash. Have a book, right? have a main flash book, and then do something like Batman: Brave and the Bold, where you can do stories about all this any speedster. Yeah. Every so month, I, I feel like a lot of the writers feel stymied right now with that. So I'm just like, just do it. Somebody pitch it to the exec, uh, the executive editor of that uh, house, whoever owns Flash, and just say, hey, man, probably be really cool if we did a Flash family anthology book, bro. Fine, people. Well, me and Loaf will will this into existence too. Oh, let me go. Well, next full moon, I'll put it on the list for manifesting. Oh Lord, her, her and her wicked friends are going to go into the woods and manifest this. A baby's got to do what a baby's got to do, Phil. <laughs> well, it, it it's not killing, but Lil sacrifices a lot of virgins, but they don't leave her house virgins. You know, I'm <laughs> you know, that's not what virgin blood means, but sure. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> no, no, it literally means that your blood hasn't been used in a spell previously. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it actually means. Fun fact. Uh, and I'm just kidding. Lil has no use for virgins. She's like, they don't know what the F they're doing. <laughs> Exactly. That that's that's a guy thing. That's a weird, creepy guy thing. I'm good on it. <laughs> I've had one or two. I mean, hey, eh. hashtag patriarchy. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, all it's cracked up to be. So, all right. Yeah, I can't believe that was such a small week. For I know there wasn't like any Comic Con week. Marvel there... was really um light too this week. Image, yeah, well... meanwhile, put like out like so many books. None yeah. of the main books, though, really, except for G.I. Joe, I think it was, probably. Yeah. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero 308 was out. Destro number two was out. Uh, oh, Rat City by Erica Schultz was out. So, oh, was that this week? Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh. what was it? What was it number four? It's like, I can't believe we're at four already. <laughs> yeah. It's been going by quick. In a good way. Yeah, definitely. Also, uh, I want to know what Justin thought of Namor number one. So, are you guys, uh, Marvel, have you already done Marvel Tales for the week? Or? We are recording it tomorrow night. We're going to talk about it because it'll fit in perfectly because we're doing part one of Atlantis Attacks. So, oh, okay, cool. Yes, so it'll fit in perfectly. I might yes. try to pop in, but I'll probably still be out. Oh, so. eh, hot date. Uh, oh, I think that's our second one tomorrow. So, it might not be till like 10 o'clock. So, I will still be out. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! <laughs> she's getting she's getting dinner and a show, kids. No comment. <laughs> remember, remember, I thought you were abstaining for the uh, for the marathon. Anger gives you power. I am. 
anger gives you power. It does. It Frust does. Certain forms of frustration give you power. <laughs> it's not frustrating at all, to be quite honest. Oh, my. Animals, well, it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I, like I said, it's given me plenty of time to work on my robot, so. Oh, my. Yeah. Call the rest of us nerds. Listen to that. I don't need sex. I can build a robot. Call me Victoria Von Doom. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <sighs> but I have nothing but uh, love for our AI overlords. Exactly. Exactly. I'll be your spokesman on any podcast you'd like me to be. <laughs> They do their own podcast, you know. Sky has a little out of control right now. Skynet is salty and petty. Skynet is great, so great. <laughs> All right. So, anything else? I guess I should have had the uh, schedule up. <laughs> hey, oh, <laughs> what? Nothing. I didn't open this schedule. What are you thought laughing at? You don't have it memorized? <laughs> yeah, I have a whole year memorized. Not Come memorized. on, Rain Man. Well, well, next time is, next one is 991. 191. Uh, we had one plus not one plus nine plus one is eleven. And and <laughs> uh oh. You said nine and eleven together. Uh oh. Uh... All right. This well, video well, has been demonetized. <laughs> well, next week. Sorry. Well, next week, Luke won't be here because Justin will be here to talk uh, Asriel with me uh, as we talk Asriel plus the question number Don't one. Don't tell me what I will and won't be doing. Well, we already recorded it, so you ain't, you ain't going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> She's afraid, kids. Watch. She won't show up. <laughs> All right, but and then in two weeks, Lilith will be back uh, to talk. Maybe. One now you don't know. One week. I of might just sleep in, Phil. I know. It'll be the first time. Ain't gonna be the last time. <laughs> Too busy playing with robots. Ah, uh, yes. One raising week of... three kids and five dogs. I'll have you know, sir. Uh, I know. I know. I said it before. I'll say it again. She has a rough life. All right. She has flea collars on all of them. All right. Uh, so, yes, when Lilith returns, we'll do a week of Film Freak from Batman 395, 396, and Detective Comics 562. How, di how deep did you have to dig for Film Freak? I mean, pretty much, I think that might be one of his only appearances, like that three those three issues, because then I think he really doesn't show up a lot after that, and then Bane snaps his neck at the beginning of Nightfall, so... Yeah, it's like, who even remembers Phil Freak? That's what I'm saying. Is the canonist of cannon fodder. I mean, he got he got killed. No one really gave a crap. And then uh, the two weeks after that, Will will uh, convince me, why is Calendar Man not cannon fodder? Guys, this is your time to rise up. All ten of us Calendar Man fans. Let's go! <laughs> maybe maybe get some, uh, some reinforcements from the uh, Killer Moth segment. <laughs> I don't think they have crossover, unfortunately. <laughs> I know. Well, they they did work together in that detect that uh, Shadow of the Bat. The, yeah. That's probably about it. All right. So yeah, kids, send us your thoughts on uh, well, the stuff we talked tonight, the upcoming stuff, any of the new DC, uh, any of the Bat books coming out in October. Uh, so yeah, if you sure. want to drop what you heard at Comic Con, what you're excited about, go ahead, drop that too. Yes. So send us your thoughts. Email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail. <laughs> that thing scares me every time, bro. I'm like, who the hell's coming on the podcast? This <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. <Trey. laughs> you see another one pop up in the middle of the screen at the bottom. I'm just like, ah. She's I'm she's old like, and frightened. She's like, that big red thing scares me. <laughs> As long as it's not purple, hello. All right. Uh, so, yeah, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 
2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Get your brand new Capes and Lunatics merch, uh, or be a hipster, or get the old stuff like hipsters like Gray and Lilith. Uh, again, Lilith Hellfire demands that you rain random money on us through the Cash App link. Make it rain. Uh, yes, please, please don't let us uh, become that metaphorical young girl dancing in the club before it's burned down by a uh, firefly or. We get we get tip or or we get ones in the for heaven forbid firebug. That's true. Or we get uh ones in our uh, G string that are from two years in the future. She looks like she was just working a a stripper pole down at Divas. Oh, that's true. All I could do is wait. That's right. Be that stuck in the backyard for two years. Be all right. The money kids, not the funk. All right. Uh, and of course, (laughs) no judgments. (laughs) <laughs> I told you, that's the that's the black magic that's where that black magic comes from all right and of course you can always uh please subscribe to our patreon Lilith and i give you exclusive episodes every month just for our paying sub, uh patreon elite subscribers like justin and russell and the, the inmates in the asylum <laughs> that's right and the and the king of uh ray plays games playing with himself ray himself uh and Moz. Uh, so, July episode, we're going to talk about our road trip to uh, Hershey Con, where we met such illuminaries as DG Chichester, Mr. Mark Wade. Mark Wade. Yeah, aforementioned Mr. Mark Wade. <laughs> and we saw that giant totem pole that was Jim Shooter. And again, like... <laughs> he's so tall. I, he's, he's very tall. I, I, now I know what you feel like. I'm like six foot. I'm like, oh, sir. <laughs> And I was trying to tease everyone in Energon Universe last night. I'm like, and people were literally ripping down doors to get to the celebrity. <laughs> true story, true story. Literally happened, kids. Yes. All right. Oops. So find it all at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. Tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. More vicious and brutal than ever. All right. Speaking of vicious and brutal and getting burned, little hellfire. Where can people talk to you? Oh, you won't get burned with me. I don't know what the rest of y'all are doing, but um, if you just want to hang out on TikTok, find me, Lil Hellfire69. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or Threads. Either do the six or do the nine. Try to donkey punch me now, bitch. Uh, what are we doing for 200? It's right around the corner. I me. keep telling you, I swear. Batman 89. Basket. Batman 89 with Justin. <laughs> With our old, with, with our old pal, the owl. I do edibles. Leave me alone. Oh, that's right. I do. I do have a. Uh, I had. I do know someone in my life who uh, did a lot of uh, marijuana as a as as a uh, teenager who has no memory now. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah. That, oh man, that's right. It's only like what nine nine more it's episodes. Just for everybody else who's wondering that couldn't remember too. Yes, Batman 200 kids with uh yes, all the hosts of We Are the Night will be there to the Batman podcast. I think we need to do a live watch. Ooh, yes. Never never have another man's yes. rumor. <laughs> Without asking at least. That's right, consensually. Oh. <laughs> uh... The big finish. Yeah. I don't think those were jazzy. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. Uh, thank you. For, thank you for joining us, everyone who's not Ray. Again, Justin will be here next. Hear this? What? Ray's not going to hear this. I know. All right. Thank you for joining us next week. Justin will be back to talk Asriel. And then in two weeks, Lope and I will discuss Film Freak. We get closer and closer to episode 200. Maybe, Mark maybe, your cards every time I ask, kid. I, well, I was going to say, maybe at the end of every upcoming episode, I'll have to remind the audience and you. Or the, kids, no, I won't ask until episode 195, I promise. Kid, kids, it's not the edible. She's getting old. No, it's definitely the edible. Uh, 
tattooed on some. Kids are homemade. I'm kidding. If I tattooed it on some 25 year old's ass, you remember. All right, kids. Until next time, join us. Same bat time. Same bat channel. We are the night. The. The. Batman, Batman podcast. podcast. Burn, baby, burn.